Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We are in East Brandywine uh, Fire Company in Chester County, Pennsylvania. We're going to be doing a station rigs. Last week you saw the station cribs, brand new station. It was very beautiful. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. We're going to be taking a look at their tower here and we're going to talk to their deputy chief, Sergio. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting us in. Oh, pleasure to have you guys here. All right. So first of all, tell us your name. Make sure I got it right. I'm uh, Sergio Orr. I'm the deputy chief East Brandywine here. Okay. Been How here long? About uh, 13 years. 13 years. All right. So you got a pretty good working knowledge of this truck, huh? Yeah. Well, brand new. It's a 2019 Pierce Enforcer Cab. It's a 105 foot uh, heavy duty. Okay. Aerial ladder. All right. Do you mind if we open the doors and take a look? Go for it. All right. Let's have it. You mind if I sit in? Go for it. All right. So Pierce Enforcer here. Uh, let you come up on inside here. Talk me through what's over here on the instrument control panels. Um, so actually, basically, it's a it's a standard um, driver's center. You know, it's just like you would see in your in your car or uh, an over the road truck. You've got your steering wheel. You've got speedometer, tachometer, uh, battery meter. I think some of the other things that are different. Um, just because it's an emergency vehicle, obviously above your head, you've got controls for all your emergency lights, um, scene lighting different things like that. Right. Now this is, it looks like a push button transmission with air brake system. Yeah. Okay. And you said it's 105 feet long? The ladder itself is 105 feet long. Actually, if you look right okay. above your head in the, uh, you can get the overall length and governor weight, uh, which is really important for us because, you know, depending on where we're going, there's certain bridges that we need to fit under. There's certain uh, bridges that we can't go over because the, the governor weight is too high. Okay. Okay. Now you've got quite a bit of stuff up here. What, is, what are all these things? Can you kind of talk me through? Sure. You got a headset, you got radios. So we've got headsets. Uh, basically, uh, the firefighters and drivers, the officer will wear that while they're going to the call just to take out all the ambient noise from around you. Uh, it gives us a little bit better communication. That way, the officer can give uh, the driver directions on where they're going, um, commands to the, the, the firefighters in the back so they know what they're going to do when they go on scene. Okay. Um, the two up front are, are wireless, actually. So the driver and the officer can actually wear these if they're not doing firefighting, uh, active firefighting around the, the vehicle to okay. help set the truck up. Um, if we're ending up backing the, the vehicle up into a tight spot, the officer can have that headset on. So actually talking to the officer or to the driver and saying. That's a good safety feature to have. Not only does it protect your hearing, but now you can actually concentrate on what's being said. Oh, absolutely. It's connected to the county then radio too, right? Yes. Okay. So we've got three radios. Uh, we've got our main county radio, a secondary county radio. Um, in Chester County, we're, we're somewhat fortunate. We've got a, a new radio system, uh, APCO 25 uh, phase two. So it's a 700, 800 megahertz trunk system. Um, and we have three main frequencies, depending on where you're at in the county. Uh, they call the east, the central, and the west. We're in the central region. Um, and each of those regions has their own uh, fire ground operating frequencies that are also uh, simulcast throughout the county. So it's one of those things where the dispatchers can actually hear and talk with you while you're on your operating freezing where we actually didn't have that to the previous. Instance. Right, right. So now as I'm sitting here, I notice that, you know, it's, it kind of cuts right off right at the front of the engine. How do you know how far you're up? Is that just learning to drive? Or yeah, it's, uh, it is, it's really one of those things you just kind of have to get used to it. Um, and one of the amazing things about the uh, fire apparatus these days um, is that they, they really drive just like a car or a truck. Okay. Once you get used to the weight and everything and how kind of big it is and you get to judge how you need to turn and things like that, um, they really are really relatively re really easy to operate. Okay. Now sitting in the driver's seat here, do I, would I normally wear bunker pants and coats and stuff like that while I'm driving or? Uh, it's really personal preference. Uh, for me, I don't. Uh, I, I tend to, if, I, if anything, I'll have my bunker pants on. I won't have my coat on just because I want to have that, that freedom of movement, that right. mobility. Uh, but since the the area that you're sitting in is is a lot bigger, it's it gives you more room. So that way, if you had bunker pants or a coat on, um, you'd have the room to move around. Uh, but for us, it's it's really just uh, personal preference on what the drivers. Awesome, want awesome. Yeah, this is fun. This is uh, I definitely want to learn how to drive one of these one day. So. Right. Well, so the one thing that is uh, we require a CDL uh, mostly for insurance purposes. Okay. Um, it's one of those things that in the state of Pennsylvania, you're not actually required to have one. Because it's an emergency vehicle. Because it's an emergency vehicle, uh, and only because of that, you need to be signed off by the chief of the department. Um, you usually get a, a card that says, you know, you've been through a training program, you've met the minimum specifications, and then, you know, you're, you're qualified to drive. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I would definitely learn, love to learn how to do this. Do you mind if we take a look at all the cabinets? See what you got Let's go. All right. All right, how about we start here on the driver's side? Kind sure. Of walk me down the truck. Uh, how many uh, passengers can you take? So we can take six, six passengers, okay. driver, officer, four firefighters. Okay. Uh, the officer and the firefighters all have their packs mounted in the seat. The driver, we actually uh, use a seat that doesn't have the pack in it just so it's a little bit more comfortable. Right. Uh, it can actually be really uncomfortable to have that pack uh, riding in your back when you're trying to uh, right. drive a truck right. this size. And in here, what, what do you carry in here? Obviously, you got your flashlights, you got your radios for each guys with the air pack. Do you carry any EMS gear? Do you carry any we do. Like, ticks or anything like that? We have a, you want to jump up in. So, up in the what they call the dog box, which is really just the engine cover. Uh, there's a hand light for each of the riding positions back here. There's also a radio for each riding position. Uh, we do carry our thermal imaging camera uh, in the back. Uh, you see they're going to be picked by the senior most firefighter, okay. or they're going to pass it up to the officer if they request it. Okay. And then you got a couple cabinets here. What are in the cabinets? Cabinets here. This is our AD uh, first in bag. Case of water, usually. Um, yeah, a just little for, bit of rehab. Just for a little bit of rehab. Um, going from left to right, underneath this seat here, we've got a large area search bag. Uh, it's got 200 feet of rope in it, and, and then these feet. nice um, carabiners and carabiners. Put, what put what happens is, is it's, a, it's a retractable search rope. Okay. So they can come off of that rope. Um, I believe these are 50 feet long. Nice. So there's three or four of those off. Nice and there. easy to grab there. Right. Um, I noticed your packs are in there. Do you carry your own mask or does there get assigned a seat? How does that work? So with the grant that we had just got, these are actually new uh, probably about three months ago. Uh, we got a set of masks for all of our more active firefighters. Okay. Uh, there's about 20 of those that we have that have been issued their personal mask. But we also have masks in each riding position because if you're not one of those people or if you happen to forget it when you get on the truck, right. you'll always have it here. Okay. Okay. It's nice and roomy back here too. I thought it was going to be much more um, compressed, but uh, I got plenty of room to reach out with all my bunker gear on. Bunker gear can weigh quite a bit. Oh yeah. yeah. So with all your gear on, about how much is a with the pack and everything, about how much weight are you carrying extra? Well, with gear, uh, your pack, radio, hand light, and no tools, um, you're probably looking at about maybe 75 to 90 pounds extra. Yeah. And that really depends on the, the firefighter, because a lot of us, like, we carry different kinds of tools, like screwdrivers and escape rope and everything else in your gear, and so, you know, whatever that adds, uh, you got to add that to it. Right, so. right. Yeah, so you definitely got to be physically fit in order to, Absolutely. to work this. All right. Is there anything else in the cab that I missed? No. I um, mean, on this side we have uh, another compartment. Basically, all it has is uh, a couple of uh, chargers for our um, Milwaukee tools, okay. battery after Milwaukee tools, okay. and then we also have two MSA gas meters. Okay. Um, so if we ever go to a CO incident or uh, odor of gas, you know, we can have these with us. Nice. All right. I'm gonna step out here. As we work our way back, I noticed you got a cabinet right there. Is that an inside-out cabinet or? No, it's just the outside. Okay. So what this is, is both sides of the apparatus are set up the same. Um, we've got a hook on the door, uh, a set of irons on the inside. Okay. So flathead axe and a Halligan bar. Right. Uh, this side just has the one um, hand line in it. And then we've got a transverse compartment. There's actually nothing in there right now. And then the uh, our pressurized water extinguisher. Okay. All right, behind that is what? So typically, uh, if you have a pump on your truck, this is where it's gonna go. Okay, uh, since so this, this is, is actually dry. This is a dry, app, uh, dry truck. Okay. So not having that gives us a ton of extra storage space. Wow, okay. So explain to me what's the difference, uh, benefit of having a dry tower or ladder versus having one with water on it? Again, it's, it's really personal preference and what your area kind of dictates that you need. Um, for us, we have plenty of apparatus here, so we have three other apparatus that have 2,000 gallon minute pumps on them. Okay. Um, so we figured that you know we didn't need to carry uh, the extra weight, water, and limited sure. space for carrying equipment. So that's the trade-off. If you don't have a pump and tank, you have that much more room to carry equipment. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the the uh, compartment here, there's and these are pull-out drawers. These are pull-out drawers. So there's a variety of different equipment. 
okay. on each tool board. Uh, plenty of hooks. You've got you know, another set of irons, uh, more axes, some kind of specialty equipment. Uh, but our hand tools are mainly on the first two boards. Okay. Now, can you explain to our viewers what the purpose is of a truck company? What is their ultimate role on a fire ground? So the ultimate role of the truck company is any other function that doesn't involve actual water suppression. Okay. Uh, search and rescue, uh, ventilation, uh, securing utilities, and then obviously helping out with, uh, with backing up the other firefighters that are okay. in there. So all the tools that you see on here are gonna be basically the, the, the minimum set of tools that they need to, to do their job. Yeah. And then a couple of other things. Okay. Now does that go from side to side? Yes, so okay. this middle compartment here is a transverse compartment. Once we get to the other side, you'll see that these trays, as they slide out this way, okay. same thing on the other side. So you don't have to really worry about traffic. You can pull it out to what yep. diver safe Yeah, if, if you're working in a roadway or if there's cars going by and you need to get tools off the truck, right. you can just go to the other side. Yeah, a lot of times we pull into the driveways and you got trees on one side and yep. the, the yard on the other, you can actually just pull it out th that one side and not have to worry about anything. So. I noticed you also have a Stokes and you have a fast board? Yes. Are you guys also part of a RIT team or is it designed to do that? Yes, so basically this compartment here is for all of our RIT equipment. So we have a prepackaged Stokes basket. Um, when we go to the other side, the one nice thing about this is, is the guys uh, use their ingenuity and actually put uh, wheels okay. mounted to the other side with a quick release pin. Right. So it's a lot easier to carry this because this, this can get pretty heavy and it's easier just to Take this out, put it on the ground, load all the rest of the equipment that we need on here that'll fit. Two guys can take the front of it and just walk off with it. Perfect. So as we're working our way back, this is your outrigger, correct? Yes. Okay, how do those operate? So they're hydraulically driven. Um, there's a pump on the inside of the truck. Those are hydraulics. Everything is controlled from the back. Um, so basically there's a control panel on each side of the truck that'll hold, that'll has the controls that'll push these out and then push them down. Okay. And there's lights to say, you know, whether it's been fully extended, if it's not fully extended, and then it has good ground. How wide height. does it normally get when it's fully extended? So the one nice thing about having a ladder versus a tower is that the jack spread, which is the width from side to side mm -hmm. on these is a lot shorter. Um, it's uh, 16 feet as opposed to 18 feet. Okay. Um, and you'll actually, you really notice that difference uh, when you go to a fire ground and you see uh, a tower ladder when its jacks are fully spread, they, they, they go up pretty wide. Right. And this is, uh, it's only a few feet off the truck. Okay, and these are the platforms for underneath the, the foot, is that correct? No, these are just, uh, you oh, know, just steps, steps to come okay. up. So the, uh, the outrigger pads are, are on the back, so that way, okay. as soon as the driver comes out or whoever's gonna be setting it up, they can run around to the back. Uh, our preference is, is to push the outrigger pads, or the outriggers out as far as they need to be, drop your pads underneath, and then, and then run them down. All right, cabinet behind this. So, looks like a chimney kit. Chimney kit, one of the other things that you do a lot of on the ladder company is, yeah. you know, have to go up to the top of that, uh, that chimney. Um, but this, all the stuff in this compartment is either going to be used for the top of the chimney or actually in the bottom, in the firebox where that fireplace is. Right, right. So what happens is, is they'll, they'll take this blanket out, which is a heavy duty blanket, um, they'll lay that out on the inside so any embers that end up coming out of the, um, uh, the chimney or the, the flue itself, if it lands on that, it's not going to you know, damage the, the interior yeah, of the Yeah, it won't burn the carpeting or furniture or whatever on it. You just kind of cover that up. Right. Um, and then uh, underneath here, you have a, a can to catch the embers that you... Small salvage buckets. Uh, you can either use the big ones or the small ones. It really depends on the size that you have. Okay. Um, also, you can use that for anything that you really need to, if you need to put it under uh, a dripping uh, faucet or something like that, just to catch some water. Right, right. Um, it's really, you know, whatever you can, uh, whatever you can think of, you know, that's what you can use it for. Awesome. Now, the one thing that I've noticed about your truck is you have ladders, but they're not sideways. Right. How do you get these in and out? And what made you kind of decide to stack it this way versus so, sideways? We tried to maximize the amount of ladders, ground ladders that we could fit on the truck. And we also wanted to maximize the storage space that we had. Um, and the only way to do that, uh, which we obviously we didn't come up with that, this has been 
a something that's been in the fire service for a long time. You'll see it a lot in Boston. Um, you actually see it uh, in a bunch in, in Chester County as well. If you go down south in the West Grove, okay. uh, they're one of the, the people that we got the idea from. What they call a side stack ladder. Okay. Um, so we can fit you know, two 16 foot and uh, 28 foot ladder on each side of the truck. Yeah. Where normally if you had had those flipped over, you would only have possibly one, maybe two ladder. Correct, and then, or something in the storage that goes underneath behind. Right. So we also have the storage that goes underneath uh, okay. from the mine that goes down the, the main ladder tunnel. Uh, that has two 35 foot ladders, two 24 foot ladders, uh, and two 18 foot ladders. Okay. So how many ladders all together do you have on a truck, on this truck? Right now, we actually, we had another ladder on the, the aerial main. Okay. Uh, we ended up taking that off just because it was, it was interfering with visibility. Uh, with that ladder, we had 350 feet wow. of ground ladders. Okay. Uh, so now we have 330. So you can pretty much do a 360 and, oh, and ladder pretty much every window in a house. That's one of the things that's really big in our department is, you know, when, the, when this ladder gets uh, to a house fire, you know, whether it's a working house fire or, you know, people are just investigating, it's get ladders off the truck and get them up against the house. Okay. as many as we can. So one of the things that we're going to do, we're going to do the More You Know series. This is a series that we want to teach you guys some of the skill sets of what it takes to be firefighters. So we're actually going to take one of these ladders off and show you how to properly take it off the truck, bring it to a house, and throw it up on the, on the side of a house. So what we're going to be doing now is going to give you a little bit more of the More You Know. This is going to be section K of the skill sheets. This is gonna be throwing a ladder. We're taking it very basic. We wanna take a 24 foot ladder off the truck, carry it across the fire grounds. We're gonna foot it, we're gonna put it up the side of the building and we're gonna climb it. Uh, we have the battalion chief and one of the firefighters that can demonstrate that skill for us. So what they're gonna do now is they're gonna pick the appropriate size ladder for what they're doing. They need to go to the top of the second story here so I believe he's gonna pick the 24 foot ladder. His partner's getting his tools for him. He selected the correct amount of tools to go to a roof. Together they bring down the ladder. They hold it both on the same side and walk together. They walk with purpose, but they do not run on a fire ground. Next thing they need to do is pick the place where they're gonna go up. They locate where they need to go. We have one on the bottom that's gonna foot the ladder. He actually steps on it as it comes up. They're gonna bring it into a vertical position and raise the ladder. So once it's raised, he's gonna foot it back. So the proper amount of distance up top and he's gonna secure that rope so it doesn't come off. Once that's secure, he's gonna give his partner the thumbs up or a verbal command as he foots this ladder and maintains that. At all times, he's gonna hold that ladder. If you notice, he's got his hood on or his uh, helmet on the entire time. And once he's up, and we're good. Very basic, very simple, but it's a key function for any fire ground. You may have maybe five or six windows on a second story that you're gonna have to go in. So these trucks come with all these ladders. You're gonna have a couple of fire guys throw these ladders to each of those windows. So along with the air packs, um, obviously you're, you're most likely gonna need more than one uh, SCBA bottle. Okay. So if you look at these compartments on the side of the truck, uh, they all have uh, a spare SCBA cylinder in there. Right. Uh, this middle one's a little bit different on this side because this is where we keep the driver's air pack. Okay. Since uh, he doesn't have it in his seat. He doesn't he have it in the place. seat, still needs to have it. Okay. Uh, this was a good spot for us to put it in. Yeah, yeah, nice and secure there. What do you got up top? So up top in this compartment here is where we have now our I see where that salvage step covers. Comes. I see yeah. where that step comes in play. All right. Oops. That's my fault. <laughs> All right, so you got some salvage covers up there. Salvage covers, and we also have a 100-foot uh, electrical cord reel that's okay. hooked up to a 6KW generator. Okay. Um, so you can see there's a junction box off the side, so if they need power inside the house after the power's been disconnected by the power company, you know, we can run that inside. Okay. Uh, and this one next to it? This one next to it holds 
some of our rope equipment, we carry an Arizona Vortex, uh, which is uh, artificial high directional. Okay. Uh, similar to a tripod, it's just got a lot more functionality to it. Um, so there's uh, leg bags in there, uh, the main head bag, and then a couple of rope bags. So then you have harnesses for everybody up in there then too, or they have their there's own harnesses? There's four harnesses, uh, which are on the, the right-hand side there. Okay. So it's kind of a uh, one size fits all. Okay. You just cinch them down and yep. make them fit. Yep. And the rest of our rope equipment is actually up in that. So are you guys qualified as a high angle rescue or is this just more of that emergency situation? It's again? more of the emergency situation. Uh, Chester County is, is nice in the fact that they have uh, a, what they call a rescue task force, okay. which are several uh, departments within the uh, county that participate in that. Uh, we're looking to, to join that hopefully in the next year or so uh, on the rope high angle side. Okay. So it's just a matter of uh, getting the guys trained and. Awesome. That too would be fun. I would love to do that. I do a lot of rock climbing, you know, for trying to stay fit and, um, you know, going up is something I enjoy. Yeah. So, all right, what do we got back here? So this is more of your driver's compartment. Smaller compartment where they can fit some of their gear in. Uh, it also has the two extinguishers. You've got an ABC, or, uh, ABC and a uh, CO2 extinguisher. Okay. Uh, utility rope bag and then the equipment that you're going to need to need that you'll need to get the the water supply, the main uh, master stream in service. So I didn't see any intakes on the side of the truck. Where are your intakes to, to feed the master Intake stream? Intake comes straight off of the rear of the apparatus. Okay. And there's just one intake? One intake, uh, because there's no pump, okay. it's one of those things where you'll take that manifold that's in there, we'll take this cap off, you screw it on. Okay. You got a pressure gauge so you know what the inlet is, that way uh, the driver knows how much water is going into the truck. They can decide if they need more or less, depending on uh, the tip that they have on the on the, the main itself. Okay. I noticed the color scheme kind of changed. You were a yellow around the side, and you got kind of a chevron pattern going on here. Is that specific for a reason, or is that just because that's what we like? Uh, it's it's a safety thing. Okay. Um, DOT kind of requires on the larger apparatus that you have uh, some type of chevron package, at least on the back. Um, not sure when that actually uh, was put into effect, but it's it's one of those things where it's it's they're very specific on the colors that you can use, okay. uh, but the pattern is is always the same. And it's it looks right. like it's a reflective then too, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. you can't miss a truck when you're coming from the rear as long as the light. You said the um, controls are back here to put out the outrigger. Yep. You got these little doors on each side. They flip open, and then if you look inside, you've got two switches on the top. One's for your high idle. Okay. So the high idle sends the motor into above uh, 1,000 RPM, so it gets the, the hydraulic fluid mode a little bit better. Yep. And then one control for the front going out, one control for the front to go up and down, okay. and then another one for the rear. Okay. And they've got these little lights on there, so as soon as that little light turns green, depending on which one it's closer to, so for this one it's your, your extension retraction. Yep. As soon as that light turns green, you know that that stabilizer is fully extended, okay. and then the bottom one here is for ground contact. Okay. So there's a sensor in there that knows that it's taken some amount of weight some from of the, the vehicle. Some of the pressure off the vehicle. Right. The lever up. Now, um, I, we've talked about this in the past. People can short jack a certain tower or stuff like that. Yes. Because this is so short going side to side, only 16, do you ever short jack yep. a ladder with us too? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, it all depends on the situation though. Um, if you know that you're only ever going to be working off one side of the apparatus, um, then you can short jack uh, the trucks like these. Uh, from the manufacturer, they told us that, you know, as long as you go right outside the footprint of the truck okay. and put the jacks down, that's the safest thing when short jacking it. But you never, you know that once you've done that, you can never operate off that short jack that's side. short jack side. Okay. And there's, there's sensors and uh, limiters in there that will actually prevent you from being able so to. So as that. a driver, you're going to have to know when you're pulling up into the scene, you know, the command should tell you, you, you know, you're going maybe to the front of the building, you might have a short distance and you have to position that in a certain way yep. to make sure that you can get those jacks out far enough so you can get that ladder up. So, you know, there's a lot of communication and understanding how to drive yeah, there's, this thing. There's plenty of nuances because you can pull into a, a commercial building with a parking lot where they've got, you know, a sidewalk or, you know, a grass curb or something like that. And if you're not, if you haven't positioned the truck just right to go either on one side or the other of that curb, then you know you can get yourself in a bit of trouble. Okay. Where you have to reposition the truck where you thought you were good. Gotcha. And behind the big 49? Behind the big 49 is the uh, interior ladder tunnel. I think I was saying before. Okay. We carry the 235s on the outside. 
uh, two 18-foot roof ladders and then two 24-foot okay. roof ladders. And these are considered roof ladders because they have the hooks on them, right? Yes. Those are the hooks that you, you can actually spring load it and they yep. load and they hook on the top of the... Yeah, so when they take them out, I'll push it down, flip it over, and then if you look in there, that's basically the, the square kind of holds it in place. Right, right. Um, these are double-ended, so there's hooks on each other, either end. Okay. So it doesn't matter which end you put it in or take it out on, you're always going to have hooks on. Right. So in that emergency situation, you don't have to think too much because it's going to be you'll be able to fix it the way you need it. Yep. Uh, what are these little things here? Spanner wrenches. Okay. Uh, so the manifold that gets put onto the back, it'll take five inch hose. Um, it was, they use a Stortz connection, okay. is what they call it, uh, and these. Uh, spanner wrenches are specific for those Stortz connections to be able to tighten them and untighten them. Okay. All right. Uh, underneath here, it looks like there's another little storage unit. So this is actually where the manual controls oh. for the ladder are. Okay. So if you need to override the electronic controls because they failed for whatever reason, uh, you can come in here and work all of the outriggers to move out and then go up and down. Okay. That's a good backup, a redundant system to have. Yeah. So you, normally you wouldn't have to open that at no. all. Okay. This would be if something catastrophically failed with your electronic system, you needed to to, to put the apparatus away and to be able to, to get it home. These are the controls that you would it's use. It's good to, to know it. they have a backup system. Yep. So, because uh, notoriously things are going to fail. When Absolutely. You, you least expect it. All right. So to get up to the platform, you have ladders on each side. Yep. Um, and up there, do you ha carry any extra special gear? Or do you carry any um, maybe harnesses or anything like that? So if you look at the base of the ladder, you can see that diamond plate box there. That mm -hmm. actually flips up and that's where we keep our ladder belts. Okay. So that way it's not like, you know, you came down here and you forgot to get your ladder belt when you were going up. It's always at the base of the ladder. So if you don't have one uh, on your personal gear, you can just grab one of those and okay. head up the ladder for it. All right. And the controls to put the ladder up are up, up top or are they yep. down low? They're all, they're all up top. You can see the white box yep. on the side there. Okay. That ends up flipping up and that'll give you all your controls for extending, retracting, lowering, raising, and moving left and right. Okay. The guy going up the ladder, does he have any air capabilities up there? Because I've seen we some We don't trucks. have air capability on this apparatus. So you figure if you're going to be going up that ladder, you're going to be bringing your SCBA with you. Okay. All right. And obviously you got another set of ladders. Another set of ladders, okay. another yeah. two 16s and a 28. Yeah. yeah. And what's in this cabinet then? So in here we have the fun toys. The fun toys. <laughs> Two of our ventilation saws, uh, a standard chainsaw with a uh, what they call a cutter's edge carbide tip okay. um, blade, and then a rotary saw with what they call a black dime. That's a it's a dry and wet cutting blade. Okay. So it'll do metal. It'll do concrete. Um, just about anything you just need. about anything you need. And then a couple of spare blades in there if we need them. Um, tool fuel and oil for the uh, the chainsaw itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, Obviously these are going to be more compartments for air bottles, right? More compartments for air bottles. This right. one, like we said, was a little bit different from the one on the other side. Uh, more air bottles in here and there's kind of like a hidden compartment on this one so it drops down to here where you can have another okay. air bottle itself. Pretty slick. They love the fact that they utilize all the space that you possibly can on these fire trucks. You know, you we have to bring so much equipment uh, to make sure that we're safe. Yeah. That you, where do you put it all? How do you carry it? The fact that they do it over the wheel wells and every little nook and cranny, you've got something. Yeah, and it's it's right. one of those things where it's uh, it's firefighters get really creative on on where they can put things and, and you know what they'll fit here and what they can fit there. Right. Um, so in this compartment on the top here, it's another set. Okay. Uh, ventilation saws. We've got a rotary saw. We have another cutter's edge uh, chainsaw in the back and a tree saw. Okay. Uh, the purpose for this was if you were to be going up to do roof ventilation, you're going to go off the, the main aerial. Um, you don't have to carry one of those up top. Okay. So what happens is, is you can see that door there, oh, it's it like actually opens up on top. Up top. Yeah. Okay. So I was wondering, there's... how do you get it down from here? <laughs> so whoever's going to be setting up the aerial, the first thing that they're going to do is when they open that, we have actually have a little uh, P-touch sign that says, don't forget to pull the the saws right. and what they'll do is they'll run over they'll pull those saws out they'll just put them drop them right down on the turntable they'll okay. start getting them the aero main set up while the the firefighters are getting ready to to go to the roof as soon as they come up they can grab their saws and they can head so off. you can walk right over the top of these lights yep. and stuff like that that's made to do that yes okay all right next compartment over there a couple more air bottles okay. 
So the one thing that we do have uh, between this top compartment and the bottom compartment here is... Wow, a whole set of tools. Rescue. We have another set of Hamatro battery output hydraulic tools. Okay. Um, and this is kind of twofold. Uh, we use them, well, we haven't used them, but the purpose for them is not only for vehicle rescue, we also use them in writ scenarios. Okay. Um, you never know where you're going to need to, you know, lift a beam or something a lot heavier than you have the cap capabilities to do. Right. Because they're battery operated, you don't have to worry about being tethered to a line or something like that. Right, so you can bring it farther into the building and not have to worry about it. You also got some cribbing, it looks like. We've got cribbing, we've got six by sixes, four by fours, uh, so we can do basic cribbing on a vehicle. But they're also for um, when we need to put a little bit more stability into the, the stabilizers when they're putting them down. Okay. Uh, so they're dual use as well. Okay. Now I noticed that before you open this door, you have a camera. You had one on the back side too. What are yep. the cameras actually used for? So these cameras, there's actually one over each stabilizer. Okay. So if you're in the cab, there is a miniature tele, uh, television screen. Uh -huh. uh, there's a switch that the driver can flip, and what happens is that little television will show whatever those cameras are. And those cameras are, you know, mounted by the factory. They point out, and they actually have a little hash diagram of where the stabilizer will like sit. Like kind of a backup camera. Right. So the the driver, while they're if they flip that switch and they're coming into the scene, they'll be able to see, you know, based on those cameras, where their outriggers are gonna set. So they can kind of judge, hey, am I gonna sit on this so piece that of positioning grass? we just talked about, right, that's exactly. gonna help them position exactly. that truck to make sure you got it right the first time. Yep. Pretty slick, that's a good idea. You know, and that comes from the factory. That, that comes from the factory, that's actually pretty common these days. It's one of the things, you know, I've been in the fire service uh, 30 years now, and. You know, we didn't have that you know, 30 years ago, <laughs> right, right. but it's, it's, it's a nice creature comfort to have. Okay, and then this also has a coffin lid on it too, right? Yes, okay. yeah. yeah. All the four high side compartments have coffin lids on them, so you can get materials from the outside. Okay. All right. I also noticed that you got lights on the back and up here. These are basically scene lights? They are. Uh, they're called high-vis bars. Um, the traditional ones were the, the old halogen uh, big bulbs. They're like, you know, yeah, the the rectangular ones. shapes. Yeah, yeah. Um, inevitably, you end up having to have those mounted on a pole where you push them up and you know, the, the mechanisms to, to push them up and to tighten them always seem to get dirty and fail or somebody leaves it up and then you don't realize that it's up and you go driving home and a, <laughs> you know, a tree whacks it and takes it off. Um, but you know, it's just like everything else, technology's come so far these And those days. are all LEDs then? They're all LEDs um, and they put off uh, a ton of light. That's awesome. All right, next cabinet we got here. So we're back to our transverse compartment, just like on the other side. All right. It's like we were saying before, this is what I was saying about the, uh, the they've wheels. got those, yeah. those wheels mounted. Uh, we carry two battery powered exhaust fans. They're okay. positive and negative pressure. So, you know, anywhere you need to put those in the house, they don't have to be connected to a, uh, to a power supply because right. they've got a battery pack in the bottom there. Okay. And it looks like you got some portable lights then too? Portable lighting, just in case you need them. Um, We've got the, the stands on those. And then on this one here, uh, just with our, like I was talking about with the vehicle rescue equipment, uh, we call, we carry uh, rescue struts. Okay. These are their, their green light yep. uh, addition. So it's uh, 2,500 pounds of supporting and lifting capacity that these have. Uh, we have a larger set of apex struts that's on the rescue. Um, but this is, again, it's one of those things where we'll use it for vehicle rescue, but it also gives us the flexibility that if we get into a situation where we're activated as, as a RIT company for some type of collapse, right. if we need to stabilize um, some part of the structure, uh, we can run these in there and do a, a quick hasty job to, yeah. to get that. Yeah, it's nice that you're thinking you know, all across the board. You're not thinking just RIT, you're not thinking just go to the roof. You, you got this truck set up to cover everything that you need other than fire suppression, as you mentioned right. before. And this is, that's one of the things in the, at least in the volunteer fire service that, you know, it's, we're, we don't have the luxury of just saying, hey, you know, you are an engine company or you are a truck company. Right. And you could be riding on the engine and end up having to do truck work, or you could be riding on the truck and end up having to do some sort of other function. And, you know, that's one of the things where, you know, we needed to make sure that we had as much of the equipment that we needed to do all of those jobs right. uh, on the apparatus itself. Now, speaking of, you know, you, you mentioned that you don't actually use this as fire suppression, but you do because you have a ladder that goes up and you can flow water out of that for maybe a surround and drown kind right. of scenario, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All 
All right, that's pretty slick. And then we're back up to the cab. Back up to the cab. You know, same, same as the other side, okay. minus the uh, the light, you've got a, a hook, married set of irons, so you've got your, your flat head axe and your, your Haugen bar. Okay. Two and a half gallon water extinguisher. And then we've got uh, the other part of our forcible entry kit, which is basically what they call the K-Tool. Yeah. Uh, so the older guys will remember what that is. Yeah, basically you put that over the door knob. Put that over the door knob. Put your tap it down in there and, and it'll tap pull it right off. Right. Yeah, and it looks like you got a set of elevator keys. So elevator keys, uh, lockout kit if we need to. Okay. Now on this truck, do you have um, the Knox box uh, capabilities for some of the residential or for the um, commercial yep. buildings? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, what a Knox box is, in case you guys don't know, it's actually a, a little safe that holds a set of keys that are almost like a, a skeleton key or a universal key yep. for certain uh, buildings. And how that works is you actually you let the county know that you need to open up your Knox box. They give you a certain code or certain number, it'll drop that door down now it's accountable for that key, so no one's actually taking the key. So when you open it and close it, it's all accountable for, and you don't have to break windows to get into yep. commercial buildings when they're not in service. Yep. It's pretty slick. All right, and then in the officer's chair, we've already done the back seat, so I don't need to go back here. So I noticed in the front of your truck, you actually have a computer. What is that computer used for? So that computer is used for a couple of things. Uh, it actually has a direct connection to the CAD for the county. So we can go responding to calls, we can go on location, we can clear ourselves, but it also gives us all of the data that the dispatcher has on the call, the, the location, the, the type of call that it is, and any notes that they have entered in. Uh, it also gives us uh, hydrant locations. Um, it, we can get the best route of travel, because uh, one of the other things is, is that, you know, we were talking before about, you know, height restrictions on bridges and weight restrictions, stuff like that. Uh, there are certain places in the county where they actually have entered into CAD, um, those height restricted bridges so they'll you know if you ask it to say you know give me the best route as long as those restrictions are in there it'll route you right around very cool and the other thing that that can do is you know a lot of times when we show up to a fire we have multiple vehicles even just yep. here you have at least eight different vehicles that can show up but you also have other companies that show up and you need to communicate so instead of using a radio that's a one channel or maybe two channels if you switched over you can actually communicate on an mdc uh, very easily between each other Yep, you can send messages uh, to the vehicles. Um, usually it's a little bit easier to get by what you're saying on the radio, but if there's something that where you don't want to tie up that radio traffic because you know that it's being used for something else, it's just a message that you need to get to another unit, uh, you can type that in and send it right directly to that unit. Gotta love technology. Yeah, man. All right, and now we're working our way out to the front here. And up front, the only thing that I know that's special up front, and everybody says it's not a fire truck until you have a road array. Yeah. <laughs> so. I noticed that a lot of the lights that we had as you walked around are all LEDs. Yeah. Does that make a big difference? It makes a huge difference. Um, so previously, uh, maybe even like 10 or 15 years ago before LEDs were really prevalent, you had halogen or quartz lights that needed to be run, you know, through- A generator. Through a generator, through 120 volts. Yeah. And that, that ended up making sure that you had a large enough generator. Some of those generators would be, you know, 10 or 15 or 20, 25 uh, kilowatts. Uh, the generator that's on here is only 6,000 or 6,000 watts wow. because we don't need it to run any of that stuff. All the lights around, all the scene lights around the vehicle are LED, and the only thing that's really going to be running is this portable lighting that we have. Right, right. And I also know you got your federal queue, you got your air horns, everything else that you need in yep. front. You got some grab bars. Why would you need grab bars for here? So the grab bars are one of those things that uh, we put on to save ourselves from having to replace your windshield wiper. Oh, arms. when you're going to clean. Because when you're going it. to pull yourself up to clean the uh, the windshield or do any other kind of work, before you had those, everybody's grabbing onto those uh, yeah, windshield wipers those and tearing them right off. So now you can yeah. you can grab onto those eyebrows and, and not have to worry about <laughs> replacing a, uh, a wiper arm every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then one thing that I noticed when we were just walking over, you have a ball on the end of your stick. What is that used for? Those are pretty common uh, for most ladder companies. Uh, what we use it for is when we're moving the tip of that ladder out towards the building, it allows us to judge better where that tip is and also depending on uh, what configuration the ladder is in, whether it's in for rescue or for, or for suppression with the water. Uh, that nozzle will actually come out or stay retracted. Okay. Um, so it gives us a better idea of where that tip is going to sit. 
That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that you think about. So, well, Sergio, thank you very much for taking us around. We really appreciate, appreciate you guys it. coming out. But before we end, if someone wants to get a hold of you, do you have a website? Do you have a phone number? How do, and sure. want to become a part of this or maybe donate, whatever. Our website is www.ebfc49.org. Okay. Uh, and if anybody's in the area, 2096 Bondsville Road, East Brandywine Township, if you see any of the bay doors open or if you see cars in the lot, swing on by, we'd be more than happy to give you a tour. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking us around. We appreciate it. But before we end, you got to do us a favor. Hit that subscribe, hit that notification, keep getting those like buttons, hitting those like buttons and make some comments for us. I'm sure Sergio would like to answer some more questions. There's maybe something I didn't cover on the truck, maybe some you know controversy or whatever. We like to hear from you guys. We appreciate everything that you do. Uh, so thank you all for watching. This was Heroes Next Door doing a station rigs, and we'll see you again next week.